did not suffer and die to give me an education to slight, oppress, or discourage my people. Because whatsoever education I acquired out of their sacrifice of over 300 years, I shall use for the salvation of the 400 million black people of the world. And the day when I forsake my people, may God Almighty say there shall be no more life for you. I unequivocally rejected the racist assumption of much white American Christianity. Namely, that God had created a black man inferior, and that he had intended Negroes to be a servant class, hewers of wood and drawers of water. Well, I predicated my view of man on the doctrine of Imago Dei. All men, regardless of color, are created in the image of God. Now, from this premise follow the equality of all men and the brotherhood of all men. The biblical injunction of Acts 17.26 reminds us that he created of one blood all nations of men that dwell on the face of the earth. I was most interested in brotherhood within his own race. Because if Negroes are created in God's image and Negroes are black, then God must in some sense be black. <laughs> if the white man has the idea of a white God, let him worship his God as he desires. We have found a new ideal. Because whilst our God has no color, and yet it is human to see everything through one's own spectacles. And since the white people have seen their God through their white spectacles, we have only now started to see our God through our own spectacles. <laughs> but we believe in the God of Ethiopia, the everlasting God, God of Father, God of Son, God of Holy Ghost, the one God of all ages. That is the God in whom we believe, but we shall worship him through the spectacles of Ethiopia. For 250 years we have struggled under the burden and rigors of slavery. We were maimed, we were brutalized, we were ravaged in every way. We are men. We have hopes, we have passions, we have feelings, we have desires just like any other race. The cry is raised all over the world of Canada for the Canadians, of America for the Americans, of England for the English, of France for the French, of Germany for the Germans. Do we take it unreasonably that we, the blacks of the world, should raise the cry of Africa for the Africans? The Negro is a man. We represent a new Negro. His back is not yet against the wall. We do not want his back against the wall because that would be a peculiar and desperate position. We do not want him there. It is because of this that we are asking for fair compromise. Where well, the Belgians have control of the Belgian Congo, which they cannot use, they have not the resources to develop now the intelligence. The French have more territory than they can develop. There are certain parts of Africa in which they cannot live at all. So it is for you to come together and give us a United States of Africa. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are not going to be a race without a country. God never intended it, and we are not going to abuse God's confidence in us as men. We are men, human beings. Capable of the same acts as any other race. Possessing under fair circumstances the same intelligence as any other race. Now Africa's been sleeping, not dead, only sleeping. Today Africa's walking around not only on our feet, but on our brains. You can enslave as was done for 300 years the bodies of men. You can shackle the hands of men. You can shackle the feet of men. You can imprison the bodies of men. But you cannot shackle or imprison the minds of men. <laughs> Die down, black men, and dig. Reach up, black men and women, and pull all nature's knowledge to you. Turn ye around and make a conquest of everything, north and south, east and west. And then when you have wrought well, you will have merited God's blessing. You will have become God's chosen people, and naturally you will become leaders of the world. And as you bow down to the white man today, so will other races bow down to you and call you a race of masters because of the superiority of your mind and your achievement. Because no race has the last word on culture and on civilization. They do not know what we are capable of. They do not know what we are thinking. They are thinking in terms of dreadnoughts, battleships, aeroplanes, submarines. You know what we are thinking about? That is our own private business. <laughs> so give us credit for being able to use our minds. And with people becoming conscious of themselves, determined to use their minds, you do not know to what extent they can go. Liberate the minds of men and ultimately you will liberate the bodies of men. We love the white race, not for social fellowship, but for the common brotherhood of God intended we should live. What satisfaction can anyone get in being happy and see his brother wallowing in filth, dirt and disease? How can you be happy living in luxury and your brothers living in disease and then when you try to help the one out of the disease, the subtle culprit talks about disloyalty. Black men of Carthage, black men of Ethiopia, of Timbuktu, of Alexandria gave the light of civilization to this world. Ethiopia shall stretch forth our hands unto God and princes shall come out of Egypt. Because classes, nations, races have been quite quiet for over four centuries. 
who has merely borne abuse, insults, humiliation, whose forbearance can only be compared to the prophet Job, has likewise lifted his bowed head and raised it up to God's skies and cried out, I am a man and demand a man's chance and a man's treatment in this world. Yeah. That I shall teach the black man, I shall teach the black man to see beauty in his own kind and stop bleating his skin and otherwise looking like what he's not. Yeah. Oh. In the days of slavery, race mixture, mis miscegenation had occurred because the African woman had no protection from the slave master. Therefore, there is no need today for black people to themselves freely continue a practice that smacks so much of slavery. <laughs> Our critics say that the race problem will be solved through higher education, through better education, and black and white will come together, that they will never happen until Africa is redeemed. Because if those who like W.E.B. Du Bois believe that the race problem will be solved in America through higher education, they will walk between now and eternity and never see the problem solved. <laughs> God made man lord of his creation, gave him possession and ownership of the world. And you have been so darned lazy that you have allowed the other fellow to run away with the whole world and now he's bluffing you and telling you that the world belongs to him and that you have no part in it. I don't have to apologize to anybody for being black because God Almighty knew exactly what he was doing when he made me black. If black people knew their glorious past, then they would be more inclined to respect themselves. Yes, you heard of Johnny Walker Red. And black. Well, he had his adversities, but he's still going strong. <laughs> well, I intend, with your help and God's grace, to continue. Because my work has only just begun. And future generations shall have in their hands the guide by which they shall know the sins of the 20th century. I know, and I know you too believe in time, but we shall wait patiently for 200 years, if need be, to face our enemies through our posterity. When my enemies are satisfied, in life, I shall come back, or in death, even to serve you as I served before. In life, I shall be the same. In death, I shall be a terror to the cold of Then count on me to be the real Marcus Garvey I would like to be. If I may come in an earthquake or a plague or a pestilence or as God would have me, then be assured that I shall never desert you and make your enemies triumph over you. Will I God not go to hell a million times for you? If I die in Atlanta, my work will only just then begin. For I shall live in the physical or the spiritual to see the day of Africa's glory. When I am dead, wrap the mantle of the red, the black and the green around me, for in the new life I shall rise up first with God's grace and blessing to lead the millions up the heights and the triumph that you will know. Look for me in a world when I a storm. Look for me all around you, for with God's grace I shall come back with countless millions of black men and women who have died in America, those who have died in the West Indies, and those who have died in Africa to aid you in the fight for liberty, freedom, and life. Any leadership that teaches you to depend upon another race is a leadership that will enslave you. Yeah. Any leadership that teaches you to depend upon another race is a leadership that will enslave you. They gave leadership to our four parents and that leadership made them slaves. But we have decided to find a leadership of our own to make ourselves free men. Our great scholars having passed through the colleges and universities have thrown away the blessed record. Babylon did it. Assyria did it, France under Napoleon did it, Germany under Prince von Bismarck did it, England under America under George Washington did it, Africa with 400 million black people can do it. If you cannot do it, if you are not prepared to do it, then you will die. You race of cowards. You rest of imbeciles, you rest of good for nothing. If you cannot do what other men have done, what other nations have done, what other races have done, then you have better die. Can we do it? We can do it. We shall do it. 
We have prayed to God for vision and for leadership. And He has given us our universal vision. A vision that will not limit our possibilities to America. A vision that will not limit our possibilities to the West Indies, but a vision that said it must be a free and redeemed Africa. Christ to crucify, Christ to despise. We appeal to you for help, for succor, for leadership. When you endeavor to carry your burden of the heights of Calvary, when white men spawn you, when white men scorn you, when white men spot upon you, when white men pierce your side out of with blood and water gush forth, it was a black man in the name of Simon the Syrian who took your cross and bore it up the heights of Calvary. And now that we are bearing our burden of being so heavy, we just ask that you just help us all up the heights. Oh, yes, the cause is grand, the cause is glory. Surely we shall not turn back. Oh, Ceylon, 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 almighty oh, ship of state, Ceylon. Ceylon until the flag of the red, the black, and the green is perched upon the hills of the Africa. Because the time has come for the black man to forget his hero worship of other races. And to create and emulate heroes of his own. We must canonize our own saints. Create our own martyrs and elevate the positions of fame and honor black men and women who have made a distinct contribution to our racial history. Sojourner Truth is worthy of a place of sainthood alongside the Joan of Arc. Christmas Harris and George William Garden are entitled to the halo of martyrdom with no less glory than the martyrs of any other race. To St. Levitore's brilliancy as a soldier or a statesman outshone that of any other people. Hence he's entitled to the highest place as a hero among men. Because Africa has created millions and countless millions of black men and women in war and peace, whose luster and bravery outshone that of any, any other people. So why not see good and perfection in ourselves? We must inspire our literature and promulgate a doctrine of our own without any apologies to the powers that be. That right is ours and God. <laughs> Let sentiments and cross opinions go to the winds. We are entitled to our own opinions. And are not obligated to or bound by the opinions of others. If others laugh at you, return the laughter to them. If they mimic you, return the compliment with equal force. Because they have no more right to dishonor, discredit you in manhood than you have in dealing with them. Honor them when they honor you. Disrespect and disregard them when they vilely treat you. Their arrogance is but skin deep. An assumption that has no foundation in morals or in law. They have sprung from the same family tree of obscurity as we have. Their history is as rude in its primitiveness as ours. Their ancestors were running wild in living in trees of branches like monkeys as ours. They made human sacrifices, ate the flesh of their own dead and wild meat from beasts for centuries, even as they have accused us of doing. Their cannibalism is more prolonged than ours. When we were embracing the, the banks of the, of the Nile, they were still drinking blood out of, the, out of the skulls of their conquered dead. After our civilization had reached the noonday of progress, they were still living in holes with bats, rats and other insects and animals. After we had already unfathomed the mystery of the stars and reduced the heavenly constellations to minute and regular calculus, they were still backwards men living in ignorance and in blatant darkness. The world is indebted to us for the benefits of civilization. They stole our arts and sciences from Africa. Then why should we be ashamed of ourselves? Their modern improvement... To be, to be reflected and resurrected by our generation and our posterity. Why should we be discouraged if somebody laughs at us today? Who's to tell what tomorrow will bring forth? Did they not laugh at Christ, Moses, Muhammad? Was there not a Carthage, Greece, and Rome? So we see and have changes every day. So pray, walk, be steadfast, and be not dismayed. Because as the Jew is held together by his religion, the white race is by the assumption and the unwritten law of superiority. The Mongolian by the precious tie of blood. Likewise, the black man must unite in one grand racial hierarchy. Our union must know no crime, no nationality. But let us all hold together in every country, in every crime, making a racial empire upon which the sun shall never set. Let no voice but your own speak to you from the depths. Let no influence but your own rouse you in time of peace and time of war. 
Hear all, but attend only to that which concerns you. Your allegiance shall be to your God, your race, your country. Remember that the Jew in his political and economic origins always was the Jew. The white man is first a white man under all circumstances, so you can do no less. Be black, buy black, think black, and all else will take care of itself. Let no one inoculate you with evil doctrines to suit his own convenience. Charity begins at home. So first to thyself be true, and thou canst not then be false to no man. Because God and nature first made us what we are. And out of our own creative genius, we make ourselves what we want to be. Follow always that great law. Let God and the sky be our limit and eternity our measurement. There is no height to which you cannot climb without the active intelligence of your own mind. Mind creates, and as much as we desire in nature, we can have through the creation of our own minds. And today, being scientifically the weaker race, you shall treat others only as they treat you. But in your homes and everywhere possible, you must teach the higher development of science to your children. And make sure, and make sure that we have a race of scientists par excellence. For in religion and science lies our only hope to withstand the evil designs of modern materialism. Never forget your God. Remember that we live, work, and pray for a binding racial hierarchy whose only natural, spiritual, and political limits shall be God and Africa at home and abroad. With one, with God's dearest blessings, I leave you for a while. One love. Brothers and sisters, Marcus, Mosiah, Harvey.